push it away. In dances and whispers, before they all just fade. So how can I leave it all behind when I refuse to watch and fall to dust? I will find a. Every time I close my eyes, a little less of you remains. I know you're slipping further from me now. Am I too far away?
Minions have spawned.
Welcome to the world, no heroes and villains. Welcome to the war, we've only begun. So pick up your weapon and face it. There's blood on the crown, go and take it. You get one shot to make it out alive. So higher and higher you're chasing. It's deep in your bones, go and take it. This is your moment. Now is your time, so prove yourself and Rise, 
Never die when the world is coming. You can hear them screaming out your name. Legends never die, they become a part of you. Every time you play a reaching, brainless, relentless, you survive.
so bad Only took a minute for me to get what you had Sorry for the bad news, no, it makes you sad Live for a minute, baby, you should pack your bags Without a look, should be breaking the law If I don't got it, I take what I want My circle's small like a round of applause You know that I love the sound of applause You know I mean everything that I say Would you see me come and get out of the way? Back in the sleigh, back in the sleigh Back and I'm better and ready to stay I'm doing damage when just how I planned it I do what I want when I say Sorry, not sorry for being the best under the jean. Know that you're mess. Look at the gold all on my chest. Look at the gold, call it a flex. Twist of the knife, the turn of the screws, it's all in your mind, and it's fighting you on yourself. The storm is coming, wow, kid. What you gonna do now? It's your reflection looking back to pull you back. So, are you gonna die today? gonna do now it's your reflection looking back to pull you down so are you gonna die
What's up, everybody? This is Dogman checking in. Uh, EDE's mid laner. You know, we did a quick 3 0, so now we're coming here to handle business and cast up this game. Oh, God, I do have the stream in my ear still. Hang on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I got, uh, I got my bot lane here. The top and jungle are unfortunately not as cool as us, so they decided to leave. But, uh,. Timmy, Chase, why don't you introduce yourselves to the to the people? Mm, no introduction Let's... needed. All right, they'll that's Tim. Uh, <laughs> they'll see us. They'll see us in finals. That's Timmy or ADC, a man of many words. Now Chase, who's a man of even more words, go ahead. Yo, I'm Chase. I'm the support <laughs> for EDE. I know, I know. Now, this is going to be a banger because uh. The spot lane here. Mm. The Senna and the Misfortune definitely going to be pain to try to hook and kill, honestly. So I'm interested to see how this bot matchup works out. If they can get hooks and if they can get kills down there. Yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to know, you know, Chase, I know you uh, you always talk a lot about runes on different champions. You know, Thresh with the Guardian makes me feel like he wants to play for lane, but, you know, with an Ezreal, does it not seem like he just, the Thresh should just be roaming maybe mid to try and destroy Syndra and just get the LeBlanc ahead? Yeah, I mean, normally I think Kraydog normally goes, like, Glacial on for his runes. Like, I think that would have probably been a little bit better, but maybe they're just trying to survive lane. It's normally the main time you go Guardian. So that might be what that is. He's gonna go more mm. cast or Thresh. Is, it... is there... Okay. Question. Do we not have items in the top lane and or on Ezreal? Or... Yeah, okay, never like... mind. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah. I was like, how does everyone else have items, but not these two? <laughs> no, maybe, I mean, I didn't think they were this big of chokers in playoffs, but... <laughs> 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 yeah, just the top lane of the ADC just completely neglected by items. Alright, now interesting, uh, interesting matchup here, you know, they picked LeBlanc on uh, 4, and then they picked Cinder as the counter pick, so... I know that, you know, Cinder is commonly a good supposed to be a good matchup into a LeBlanc, but, you know, Elmo do be pimping, and uh, I'd say that he's he's on one of his bread and butters. And to be honest, I don't uh, I don't know too much about this Peak Slayer squ squad. I cannot talk tonight, but, uh, you know, they, they've changed rosters probably more times than I've inted, which is a lot, so uh, I don't really know. I think we've, we only played against their top laner. Uh, okay, and all of a sudden, Timber's oh. dead. Oh, Elmo's I think their jungle was there too. Maybe their jungle was there too. Okay, well I'm pretty sure Elmo's just oh. out. Yeah, he should just be out of there. So I mean, that's a huge, that's a huge outplay from Elmo. I mean, as expected on a guy when you just give him a champion that he likes to play, he's comfortable in playing. Um, Okay, that's just another ignite down. It looks like Rogs is gonna go down here. Uh, you know, we, uh, us here at ED, we're not really play-by-play -play casters, so I hope that's all right with everybody. <laughs> uh, I just watch it and go, oh my god, what's happening? But, uh, yeah, I mean, overall in terms of draft, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I would always prefer to be, uh, I don't know, I think, uh, Glacetron probably has to get ahead early, which obviously is happening, but, uh, Peak Slayers, I mean, they can just hopefully be carried by their bot lane and having two meatballs in front of them in team fights, and then you're basically just playing a pick comp with three champions to pick and Misfortune to send it a kill, so that's kind of what they're going for, which, I mean, doesn't seem like the easiest thing since you're against an Ezreal, LeBlanc, and Camille, which are all pretty slippery, along with Thresh Lantern. Um, but, you know, I'd, I'd be interested to hear from you guys, you know, what do you think about this, this bot lane? Who would you rather be? And, you know, how hard of the, how hard of the lane is it for whichever side you think is losing? Mm, it depends who my support is, really. Well, uh, if you're <laughs> the MF and your support Senna, hypothetically, of course. Yeah, but like, <laughs> who's the player, you know? 
Oh, uh, okay. It's my Senna, it's no doubt a win. But oh, true. No, I'm just... <laughs> no I, I don't. No, I think <sighs> they just get out. The Bush Trump is out of range, so it's hard for them. But if they step up for absolutely no reason and die, then, uh, you know, free win, baby. What? Yeah. Why? This, uh... This game is already seeming like it's snowballing out of control here. I mean, they're up 2k already at 5 minutes. And Glacial Charm is, I mean, not to not to blame the other guys, but they're just the better team, right, coming in. So, uh, kind of feels like this game is doomed from 5 minute mark. I mean, if it were the other way around, I feel like this game would, I'd still be thinking it's close. But the fact that Glacial Charm is up so much early kind of makes it feel, feel pretty bad if you're watching this game and you're voting for Peak Slayers here, but... Seems like, uh... Besides some... an outplay mid and... just an easy gank bot, I mean... an easy gank top, like, it just seems like this game is pretty... pretty calm and collected in pretty much every phase of the game. I mean, everyone's just farming, but... uh... farm-wise, I mean, bot lane's even, the block's gonna be up, and... Glacier Charm's top laner is just kind of winning. Yeah, right here, since they have an Ezreal, they're just able to let Thresh just roam wherever he wants, really. I mean, it's going to shove into him. It's not like uh, Misfortune Senna have major kill pressure down there unless Senna lands a root into a MF hold. Yeah, but. see, I, I think this is big. I mean, with, uh, with the wave pretty much in Gragas' control here. Um, the Camille kind of needs help to come up there and break the freeze. Um, it seems like we're gonna have a fight break out here. Elmo's going up behind. Oh, she just walked in the melee range. Uh oh, Trundle might just be running it down to give a one for one. When he doesn't need to. I mean, you have, you have your whole team coming. Yeah, this is really bad for Peak Slayers. I mean, Camille's already six. Gragas is just now coming in for no reason. Elmo's out of mana. That's the dead Camille. Wow, the, oh man, the turn. Okay. Actually, this is big with Misfortune coming Ooh. up here. I'm getting rooted. I don't think it's going to happen to anything, though. Ezreal's going to have a free lane, but that's actually so huge that Misfortune's able to get there in time and clean up the kill. Yeah, wow. that, was, that was pretty nice. I mean, that is huge. I mean, the the only thing is, I think, yes, that's probably a big play for Peak Slayers. The only problem is that Elmo is the one that gets ahead on that play. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's now 2-0. and He's got a bounty on his head. They're going to need to make plays for that, but it's just... You know, a pretty slippery champion. Yeah, Ezreal and, just gets two plate spot. Yeah, I mean, like I said, yeah, Ezreal just has free lane, so he can just do whatever he wants. I mean, he, Ezreal makes out pretty well from that. I mean, Ezreal and Misfortune are probably even off of that play, just from two tower plates versus the kill. Um, but obviously, I mean, Misfortune staying mid kind of equalizes it, so Misfortune's probably up from that. But yeah, Syndra's. Syndra's in a bad way here, I'd hate to be the Syndra right now because it just feels so bad to play from behind on Syndra. Feels like your pick potential comes in so much later into the game. Um, yeah, I mean, overall pretty insane insane fight setup here. I mean, I don't know if Peak Slayers really wants to go for this. Um, I don't think they do. Maybe they do. Maybe they just... Oh. Interesting. I mean, MF just walks up melee wow. and presses R. I... Yeah, so I mean, they, they blow their entire <laughs> load for a pick. How does that they, work? I don't know. They get the dragon. I mean, that is pretty big. I'm surprised that that's the way that fight goes. This and is again, the power of MF. It's like, MF is in such a good spot right now. She's just crazy. You just sit back and ult, you know, slow people. And well, her ult's not as strong as it was with the lethality build, but... Right. I do think the the only unfortunate thing for MF is they the side of Glacier Charm has so many ways to get out of the ult, um, or just to straight up cancel it with Camille flying in and just getting an insta E on her or uh, Trundle just pillaring her. But I mean, realistically, Misfortune should be able to get off at least or at least bait out a lot of dashes with her ult, which I don't know if that's really how you want to use the MF ult, but it's just kind of how the game is going to play out because. You're just gonna get to dragon fights, and Ezreal's gonna dash away, LeBlanc's gonna jump away, Camille's just gonna get out of the way, and like... And that bolt doesn't really have the most value, but, I mean... If they just keep... Walking at them, then... Maybe MF can just carry a team fight. Yeah, as far as team fights go, I mean, I just think... Oh, no. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, like, you just have to know that they're there, no? I mean, that's crazy to play against a Camille and LeBlanc, both out of his team. the people on the map, it's just good to assume that they're going to be right around that area. Yeah, unfortunately, I really feel like the, the Gragas was playing the game fine. Uh, I mean, the way that the waves keep on getting set up, you know, direct cam doesn't exactly show it all the time, but like, every time that you look top, it's like Gragas is trying to set up a freeze right in front of his tower, and unless he just runs out and tries to make a play, like, look at this, he can literally just keep this here forever and start regaining some of that composure top lane and getting the, the CS advantage back in his favor, or he's at least tying it up, but... He... Yeah, he must have oh, no. Yeah, he... Yeah. Like, see, that's that's unfortunate, because what are you really getting out of that? Like, you're stopping her just to what? She can back five seconds later and then TP up anyways if you shove it, or just walk back up and no harm, no foul? Like, he could have just frozen that for the rest of the time, and unless... Glacial Charm comes up there and answers it with more than one person. Karakis just comes back into that game and Camille has to go make a play anywhere else. But, unfortunate there. Um, I'm interested to see what Trundle's going to do with this Rift Herald. You know, if he does try to force something bot here and they try to shove out the lead. Yeah, for the play. Kraydog. Because I mean, at this point, if you're if you're blue team, this is actually really big by Elmo. Just moving into the middle of river basically forces them to play back because you don't know if you're about to get four manned. Um, and this kind of allows for Trundle to just walk through the bushes here. Um, the only problem with this play is like that ward that's in that uh, closest bush to blue team. You know, if that ward is in any of those bushes, they don't have a sweeper that's ready to go to check those bushes. So. It was so, a nice splash. So Trundle... Uh-oh. What Ooh. happened? Mid lane. That's actually a big shutdown for Syndra. That makes the game playable. Yeah, I mean... Blue team just has no right to be walking up like that and basically just forcing MF to flash for no reason. Um, I mean, really, if they just play it back and just wait for Ezreal and Thresh to shove the wave in, then they can just farm safely and MF still has flash. And... This play happens the exact same, but MF has flash right now, so... Oh, I just realized we went uh, Inspiration Tree on MF. Why? You have a sen- you're the ones poking. You don't need- uh, Oh, yeah. Just go the scaling. Yeah? I'll be really upset. I'll be actually really upset if she builds a Collector second. You didn't sell the key all the time, and I hate it. It's awful. Yeah, that, that would be pretty unfortunate. <laughs> The Bloodthirster is just, it's so strong. It's so strong. Alright, Elmo's up top here. The Grog Assault just seems like he didn't think about that in time to actually get out of that play. The snap. Yep. Chain yeah, plan. I think he's got to throw it as the as the Camille becomes targetable again as soon as she finishes her ult. And just yeah, knock her out of her ult in the opposite way so that you can actually dash out. Yeah, if he can just, if he just thinks of that play a little bit earlier, then he probably just walks out. Um, yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't do it until he's already at half health and LeBlanc shows, and then he ults. So a little unfortunate there. Glacial has complete control around Dragon now. Yeah. We'll just see. Yeah, if... this is this is one of those where I think that uh, Peak Slayer should just give it up. It's it's first Dragon. Who cares? You. Oh, they're not even looking for LeBlanc either. You have no idea where anybody is. I mean, LeBlanc is 5 and 1. She doesn't have her mythic because it doesn't back yet, but. I think they're gonna push in mid. Oh, they might be looking for tower. No, nope, they're looking Yeah, it's, right. it's interesting that they're basically just deciding that they want to fight this. Um, I feel like you can just get a free mid tower and walk out, but now, I mean, this is just. They're just wasting so much time. And now Camille can come and answer the wave, and now Peak Slayers is really on the clock here. They, uh, they pretty much just have to decide here what they're going to do. Like, it really seems like the calls are all over the place. I mean, at this point, you have Camille answering the midwave. All of, you know exactly where Glacial Charm is. You know they're all below you, uh, like, getting ready to start the dragon. Like, either commit to taking that... And you look at top wave, too. Like, if you just commit to midwave here, you're getting... Camille's losing so many waves top, and you're just getting a free tower, and all you're giving up is one dragon. 
I don't think it really matters at this point. Ooh, the poke coming in from Azrael. I think. Yeah, LeBlanc. I think they would have to find an engage here. In order I mean, to... LeBlanc has the blank here. They don't know where she is. LeBlanc can really just play it patient and just wait for her moment. Because if MF ever decides to ult right here, Ooh. yeah, he can just go in like that with her shot. Up. Yeah. Yep. Red team does take the dragon. That's Glacial Charm's dragon. So they end up getting the dragon anyways. And now Peak Slayer's pretty much just forfeits the entire game by just running it down into their whole team and doing absolutely nothing. I really think that's just a fight where you have to just, I mean... Just, just give it and take mid. Just give it and take mid, yeah, like, you can just do that, and then if Glacier Charm decides to answer you mid, you can literally just walk up into the topside river and play for the top tower that has four waves crashing into it, at least at the start of that whole play, so... I mean, that's just really mismanaged by Peak Slayers. They're up 5k now. A little bit more after this tower, I'm sure. Oh yeah, you think so? You think the tower's gonna add to their gold lead? <laughs> yep, yep, that's what I think. <laughs> wow. They should have brought you on here earlier. <laughs> I know, what can I All say? Right, well, yeah, I mean, now, now LeBlanc is mythic, I mean... By the time the next fight really breaks out, I mean, Ezreal's gonna be two items, Camille's gonna be two items, Trundle may be two items. I mean, it's just gonna be hard, I mean... The side of Peak Slayer is like, somehow, god, I'm so tilted if I'm that Syndra, you have no Mythic still at, six, at 17 minutes coming into it, and like, top and jungle are just not even close, I mean, yeah, look at the gold difference here, like, it's 1500, 1600, and then, surprisingly, the mid diff is only 900 gold, which doesn't really make Maybe sense Maybe due to Elmo's 84 CS, but... But, I mean... Just a theory. Sure. But I just, uh, I'm just very surprised by that to be honest, but, I mean, I guess looking at Elmo's items, he did just back and he only came out with Mythic Boots, like he didn't really have any leftover gold, so I'm just surprised that 5 kills means not that much. <laughs> Although I guess when you keep bullying the same player over and over, they're not worth as much. Yeah. Okay, the jungler's just having an ego fight. Meanwhile, on the top lane, oh Camille's about to just kill this oh Senna my. and get out. She's gonna live to tell the tale, and meanwhile, the Sejuani's running with her pigtail between her legs. Jesus. They're oh, Gragas, I don't think you want to fight that anymore. I mean, yeah, this is... This oh, is, okay. Wow. Good catch on the... Big... I mean, it's not a shutdown on Elmo, but Sindra does get a kill, which right. is nice. Gragas goes down. Yeah. Whoa! Uh, uh, oh, no. Whoa! Oh. Whoa! <laughs> that, that That's tragic. That's that tragic. Can't, that can't happen. That's not real. That can't it's, happen. It's a dream. I'm just gonna pretend I didn't see all that and move on with my day. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I mean... Okay, so... Yeah, I think uh, one thing that I'm definitely noticing, especially from... Peak Slayers is they uh they really like to just overcommit everybody to one area in the map. I mean, if you look at bot lane right now, like the red wave is just slowly gonna stack up and I mean they're just I mean both teams are really bleeding waves, no one's been bot lane in a hot minute. Um someone's just gotta go down there and I mean Elmo's doing the dogman special and just uh making sure that the enemy can't counter jungle your own jungle. Smiley face. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, somebody at some point, maybe during that whole top fiasco, someone from red team's gotta just shove in the wave so that you're not just bleeding that out, because if Syndra just happens to decide that instead of QEing this wave, like, I feel like the dopamine's about to hit and she's gonna do it, well, she already ruined the freeze, but, I mean, they could really just freeze the wave bot, same situation like top lane, and, I mean, they're just, they're just not doing it, like, there are a lot of opportunities here for Peak Slayers just to slow this game down, and I feel like that's really what needs to happen, because they're going 100 miles an hour, and they're not ready for it, you know? Like, they have no control, so... Yeah. Well, if Thank you're looking you. at the teams here, I mean, Peak Slayers definitely wants to be grouped and fighting, but, when, like, at that dragon fight, they should have just five committed. They saw Camille top. Oh, here it is. I, I it's a big pick! pick. Committing! I mean, this is, yeah, this is what the team is. I mean, they're Just literally a, a pick comp, 
both teams are really, but I mean, at the end of the day, like, Dragon's up in 19, uh, I mean, Thresh is gonna sprint his way there. If they can get one more pick, then this Dragon is free. And I think that might just be Trundle dead. I'm almost gonna try, but he gets his off immediately. Wow, Trundle turns that. And that's the wow, unfortunate. That that be... Okay. Oh. If you just kill Ezreal, just kill Ezreal. Um, yep. Okay, they're TPing uh, in mid. They need to just group together. Make sure not to get completely caught out by the Camille. Yep. Oh, okay, wow. This gets wow. This is a big fight for Peak Slayers. They completely wow. turned this game around, and the dabbing penguin wow. just to cap it all off. They did exactly what they needed to do there. It's just like you have to just go on them, and you take out the Thresh. It's like they have no pick besides the LeBlanc at that point. Yeah, I mean, why? I go. Miscommunication from Boy's Charm is insane. Why are we going in like one at a time? You know, where? Yeah. This yeah. Didn't seem like anyone really wanted to commit or even back out. They just couldn't decide what to do. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. I mean, I'm at least during that fight, I'm watching it through the perspective of Peak Slayers, and they did. I mean, they did exactly what they needed to do. Like they just found a guy, they went on him, and then Trundle turns it. And Glacial Charm just continues to overcommit, but not with everybody, and that's kind of the problem, like you're saying, like, they're just not on the same page. After Trundle kills Sejuani, they can literally just back out and then decide whether or not they still want to contest the dragon or not, or if they want to wait for Thresh, who's spawning in. Uh, but it seems like, you know, Ezreal kind of just stays in there, Trundle goes in by himself before the Ezreal even goes in, and then the Trundle just dies after killing the Sejuani, like, they, they had it, and then they just kind of gave it all up okay that's ult okay that's I'm yeah trundle, that's, tr that's big that's trundle ult. that's definitely interesting i mean i don't know if anything really comes from that there's nothing to take they don't exactly uh burst a baron or threaten baron at all on peak slayers neither team really but definitely just makes it so that if they do try to take a fight in the next like minute it's like they, they're guaranteed to have their Sejuani, you know, full tankiness. Yeah. And roll the front line for them. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a moment where you have, you know, just maybe just over a minute or just around a minute where you can, you're at an advantage, like you need to look to do something, but oh. Wow. And uh, it is the collector coming in uh, instead that, of going for the sustain. Oh, Timmy's favorite, the collector Which? coming in. <laughs> With Slutherster, right, well. you can literally just stand in front of the enemy team and just tank all their damage. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I was going to ask what you prefer, but I think I already knew the answer. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, to be honest, especially against a team that's just looking to one-shot you, yeah. how, do you, how do you not just... I mean, you literally just get poked, auto once, and you don't die. Or if you have the Bloodthirster shield going into the fight, you're not going to get bursted. Or at least you're more likely to not get bursted with anybody on your team helping you at all. Like, I really do think this is a a bloodthirster angle. Now, what do you think about uh, over on the other side, Ezreal's items here? Are you liking what you're seeing so far, going for the Surreal just third? That's standard. Yep. Very standard. No, Especially after the mythic okay. essence That's... until uh, four. Trundle ult down, I mean, Sejuani, you have all your stats Ooh, completely flash. gone. Okay. Gragas. Alright, oh, can we get yeah. a Gragas barrel? Yeah, that's huge. Okay, Prey nice. Dog's gonna die here. And they're gonna okay. keep going. I don't know if you can keep going. I think you can just try to no, force the Baron here. Yeah. It's Baron. Yeah. Clean up the waves a little bit. Big. See, and I like what Camille and LeBlanc are both doing here. They're saying... Pushing towers. We're, we're just not going to flip it. We're just going to play for the towers, get gold in our pockets while they pick the Baron, because the Baron's guaranteed, right? So, I mean, this is actually kind of big for the solo laners. It's a good way to, to catch up for the fact that uh, this play is kind of guaranteed for blue team. Now, will they be able to catch Camille? Uh-oh. Yeah. Camille, Camille just canceled oh, her back God. two times. She just canceled yeah. back twice. She's... Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, that's not who you want. Okay, well... If blood they have the bloodthirster. Oh. Wait a minute, collected! Oh. Collected! Oh. Doesn't matter. Looks like you were wrong, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way there's more value there. <laughs> I mean, think about it, Timmy. Camille has ignite. LeBlanc has ignite. Thresh has ignite. 
Your bloodthirster's useless. That guy just collected him and showed you the value. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely yep. wasn't the Graga save, but you know. Yep. I know. <laughs> Casters are never wrong, Timmy. Uh. <laughs> oh, you're calling yourself these days? <laughs> yep. Um, I'm a full foot. You know what? I might not even make it to semifinals. <laughs> oh, I'm early retirement. Okay, that's a big shutdown for the Ezreal. We got Dragon okay. coming up. If Misfortune just had Bloodthirster here, she's not oh. even in threat of dying. Oh, <laughs> okay, actually, they just ran it down. That's that's the really way. It's like it's so good. I don't and know why so Sen is so okay. good and it's so bad. Walk up. I don't know why she's standing so close to the bush. Uh, but I yeah. mean, she lives. So this is actually quite the banger of a game four. I didn't think it was going to be this close after the game started three to nothing for Glacial Charm, but. Yeah. I mean, it really seems like somehow both teams have just decided to trade blows. They're just, you know, haymaker at each other over and over. They're just, neither one is trying to back out. They're both just egoing it. <laughs> seems like they're just saying, who cares about the macro? Whichever team has better hands is going to win this game. That's really what it comes down to. They're just, they're just saying, F the macro. <laughs> we don't need it. Yep, that just gives them a free dragon right there. They took the Baron buff off of three members, and it was like the main members of the lanes, so they're not going to be able to use it very well. Yeah, I mean, Syndra has Baron here. They might be looking for this bot lane tower, but I mean, Glacial Charm, if Camille doesn't walk up right now, they're in a fine position to go and answer it, but it looks like they're just too slow to the ball. I don't think the Blanc can solo answer this, so this is going to be a tower gone bot lane, but it looks like they are grouping up mid to just trade tower for tower. Peak Slayer's kind of noticing it now. Okay, Greg is answering that. TP, okay, well all of a sudden I do not think Senna and Misfortune can be there. I don't think that those two can answer the little block, although maybe they can if Senna exhausts on time, which she did earlier in the last fight. And then does have Collective. <laughs> all right, well, all of a sudden that is in... two, two towers for one, and the outer towers do give you more gold. I think if I'm the side of Peach Slayers, I'm just looking to reset and play for that top tower now, because that's just standing gold that you need to answer, but it looks like they're yeah, just going to open the fight. Oh, they're collapsing? You have you have MF and Senna collapsing. Oh, they're collapsing. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> this Trump's, is a good flank. He's dying. Wow. Okay. Wow, I mean, not oh. looking good for <laughs> These, okay, and the exhaust, wow, I mean, to be honest, I am so surprised at how fast this guy is on his exhausts. Yeah, that was quick. If that were me, I would have flashed on accident. <laughs> like, there's just no way, I would have been scared to death. Wait a minute. Where's, where's the Ezreal mythic at? Well, uh, Ezreal doesn't you, go. You're going... You said it was stock standard, man! No, 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 oh, oh no, 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 I, I'm trolling. <laughs> we're, we're going, we're going Eclipse, which... Maybe he... ...is okay. Hey! You know what? Maybe, maybe Ezreal's going Bloodthirster here. Just no, no, for no. you. It's, it's Eclipse, <laughs> you know. Don't mind me. Just trolling. <laughs> it could be the Bloodthirster egg. Oh. Yeah. Yikes. Well... Like I said, the caster's never wrong, and you're officially a caster. Congrats. Oh. <laughs> That's how that works. Oh. Now, Sejuani... Put that on my resume. Sejuani with the Warmogs, I don't know that I like that. And the main reason I don't like that is I feel like Warmogs is not a jungler item. Because I think one of the main things that, like, if you're Sejuani top right here, then your job is just answer Camille on the side lane, take a bad trade, and Warmogs your health back up, and you can just continue to answer side lane forever. And so Camille doesn't get her value, um, besides being able to get to a play faster than, you know, the tank answering. But, in the jungle, I mean, are you really buying Warmogs because of Ezreal? Like, what are you, what are you buying it for? <laughs> yeah, I would say it's definitely for the Ezreal. I mean, if they don't get engaged on, you know, if, they, if Sejuani takes a lot of poke up front, it's possible she could get away from the fight long enough to re just regen her health well, in certain situations, but... Yeah, I mean, I uh, I'm just I'm just 99% sure that Warmogs is an 8 second cooldown on getting that health regen, and it's like... 
are you I mean if you're if you're at a dragon fight or a baron fight and you're the jungler, are you really getting poked out and then backing out for eight seconds just to get your health back? Like I just I just don't see how reasonable that is, as the jungler at least. I mean They do have two front lines uh, front lines in a way. I mean Gragas could step up to kinda like cover for her in a way. Okay. Wait, that actually does hit the Ezreal still. Okay, can Cinder get a- okay, Cinder no. flashes in! Here comes it Elmo! Is. He gets a big poke onto the Senna, but it's not gonna matter. This should just be a free Baron. They're gonna trade Baron for Dragon here, unless they can burst it, but I don't think they have the team to do it. Gragas is over here, just, you know, saying hello. Pretending to be a Krug. Camille might try to make something happen here. I don't I mean, think Camille can Camille. stop anything. I don't think I would, team is moving. I would, I would flame Camille so hard. Don't do it, bud. Thank you, Lord. And, I mean, not for nothing, there's 10 seconds left on Dragon. I don't know that they can trade this. No, I don't there's, think so. They're going straight to it. They're still down Ezreal. If you're Glacial Charm, you just kind of have to give this up. I mean, Camille's got the right idea of going back to a lane. Elmo's looking for a flank again, but realistically, what are you going to do? If he gets the MF low... But, oh. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow. Good, yeah. I uh, can't believe that Grog is They should just be far. stalling for the Camille to push top. But... Okay, some, yeah, someone's got to... Yeah, this is the classic EDE where Scooter's just yelling at us. Wait! <laughs> just don't go <laughs> in! I'm pushing! <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, unfortunately with Baron backs, so like, even if they do wait for Camille and play it patient, I mean, they're just going to send one person back and they're going to get the dragon anyways, so... Peak Slayer is, is actually really coming back into this game. I mean, hey, you know what? <laughs> they're they're showing why they snuck into the playoff bracket with uh with uh what other names? Eden Homies dropping out. I mean, that's the only reason that these guys are in playoffs. And you know what? They're playing their hearts out here. I can't believe it. I thought I was just signing up for a one-game cast, but it turns out, <laughs> in the wise words of my jungler, we might have a series on our hands. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so I'm gonna clip it and send it to him. True! Wily would be so happy. He's here in spirit. <laughs> not that he died, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not dead. Nope. Can we all engage this? Okay. Let's get from the Gragas. chunked out. Okay, he smacks oh. Elmo right in the face. See, now imagine... Now imagine if Gragas had the Warlogs here. Huge. <laughs> Ooh, the Senna. Yeah. What does the Sedge need it for? She's full HP. Wow, are they actually gonna... I think they're just gonna push end for end? They I might so. push for end uh -oh. here. Uh oh, uh oh, uh -oh. Elmo's... Elmo be pimping. Elmo's trying his hardest. He's coming in here, but I mean, it's just so hard. How do you how do you get on anybody if you're Elmo? We're playing it safe here. I yeah. definitely think that's the play. Yeah, I mean, I I think there probably was more to that push that they could have gotten, but yeah, That's I do sure. think the, the safe play is definitely the right play. And then I mean, bot wave is also it. not for nothing. They might triple in hit here if they really wanted to. I mean, they can at least force it or force bot. Yeah, and... Just take their camps, take all their resources back, grab yeah. their items, and then they could just keep shoving lanes. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the awkward part of uh, Glacial Trump's comp is, I mean, it's it's pretty much can Camille push the side lane and win the game, or can Ezreal 1v9, and I think it's just way too hard for Ezreal to 1v9 this game, like, LeBlanc really has no say-so in this game at this point, I mean, how do you ever catch, I mean, if Senna has exhaust up, who can you ever realistically go on, because Misfortune just should always be with either Karagas or Sejuani, I mean, yeah, and they got two ways of canceling her dash as well. I mean, well, technically three. I mean, Syndra, Syndra, you know, yeah. Eve, they got the Sejuani and being the able to jump in, and then the Gragas just being able to stop them. So they, they're they able to keep Fiona out pretty much everything. Fiona? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, yes. the block. The block, yeah. kind of <laughs> You know, and I think uh, one of the really hard parts is here too, the only person that Elmo can really go on is the Misfortune, and Misfortune just thought a Hex Drinker, so I mean, yeah. that just takes yeah. so much out of uh, LeBlanc sales, like, this is actually a really hard game now all of a sudden. You get flash from Gragas, it's not bad. 
Yeah, Grog is gonna play like this, he should just go Warlocks. But He's gonna engage on Elma. Okay, I mean, interesting. Uh, interesting. I think that's just two ults <laughs> completely wasted, but that's okay. Yeah, Baron I, mean, push. I think they're strong enough, they don't have to worry about Intimidation. That. Baron push is good. over. Oh, that's a good hook. If I'm Peak Slayers here, I'm not pushing I'm not pushing any harder. I'm backing out here and we're setting up for Dragon or Baron here. You got a minute nine and a minute forty. I mean you just set up that soul for you guys for for the side of Peak Slayers. I mean this is this is a really hard game for Glacier Tron yeah. to play at this point. They're gonna have to focus on their waves and they gotta keep top from pushing in. Yeah, Peak Peak Slayers is reaching Nirvana here. They're just they're just outscaled and I mean it's it's just hard enough with, I mean, LeBlanc got ahead early and they just weren't able to completely stomp the game macro-wise. I mean, that's the really hard part about playing things like, you know, Trundle and LeBlanc is like, sure, you can get ahead early, but I mean, if you guys don't have the macro to finish a game, that's going to make it really hard on you guys, you know, come a 36-minute banger that we have here, especially against, unfortunately, oh. okay, that's misfortunate, that's big. That's Collector. Ezreal just... <laughs> Ezreal just... <laughs> okay, oh, I mean, can they kill Elmo here? Elmo, Elmo! Okay, Elmo flashes out. Grog's going in like a psychopath. He should Same be here, gone. I know. Why? If I was just in there... They have no <laughs> damage. That's right, yeah. You just don't do anything. You're, you're, wow. you're totally right. <laughs> Timmy, I didn't even realize that, yeah, I literally was calling that like I was in the game. <laughs> Screaming Elmo. God, the block! <laughs> oh, and that's Ow. gonna be game. Wow! <laughs> yeah, this, is, that was... this is so crazy. The number one seed, by proxy, is all of a sudden <laughs> in a 2-2 two to two series here. Game 5, how clutch are they? How clutch have I? I ate nails for breakfast. Let's <laughs> without any milk. Let's see it, man. Wow. What? On the game five. Are you saying what's my SpongeBob reference? Is that what that was? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> yeah. How tough are ya? How tough am I? I ate nails for breakfast without any milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I really like how wow. they definitely pulled it back there, <laughs> and just played the way they they should have been, and just engage. It's like. What else can they do? They don't really have that much disengage. Just look at their team. Elbow? Just like they have Pillar. And, uh, <laughs> Elbow be <maybe>. slipping. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a huge game. Alright, well, you know, I've never casted before, so I don't know how it works if we're uh, going to break or what. But Alright, well, we're cutting to a quick break, guys. We'll see you for game five. This is a bigger series, Jesus. <laughs>
What's up, guys? Glad to be back. Chase, let's put on our, our musical voices here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Be doo doo. Be doo woo. Do we? Do doo doo. We are back with the game five, boys. The draft oh, is about to kick off here. What? what did I come back to? Well, <laughs> now that you're back, you have to sing Silver Scrapes clearly, so go no. ahead. No, no, Chase, no. I I'll do it for you. Be do do, do we do? <laughs> oh no, guys, this is this is the draft analysis that everybody's been waiting for. Okay. <laughs> what do we think so, about these uh, bands here? So Glacial Charm bands Twitch. They clearly just want a first pick server. That seems to be the play. I know their ADC plays it. I think uh, if they're banning Twitch, I don't know if they're the enemy ADC actually just spams Twitch or what, but. That just tells me they want to play Saver because uh, I got oh. told. <laughs> okay, I lied. Never mind. I suck. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is I got told that it was a draft diff. Oh, they banned Saver. Yeah, they okay. banned Saver. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is this is a game five, guys. They're they mean business. They know what the Twitch means, or they're stream sniping. One of the two. Obviously not. Uh, 
Okay, so they're going to run back the Senna. I wonder if they just take the MF here. I mean, obviously Glacial Charm takes away the Sejuani, so that's one of their meatballs uh, in the jungle. I don't know if they have a replacement. I don't know if I like Poppy early, but I mean, sure. I feel like, to be honest, if you're Peak Slayers, don't you just pick Trundle right there and just eat alive the Sejuani like they did to you last game? Chaser Timmy, uh, talk. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it was the ulti is definitely nice for Sejuani. It sucks that the pillar doesn't actually slow him. But, I mean, the pillar would set up a lot of stuff for Senna as well. But yeah. they could put MF now on <clears throat> the charm side, and I think that's a huge pickup. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I do think for Peak Slayers, MF lane going into a Senna just feels so terrible for Senna to play. Oh. Whether it's supporter ADC, I know that MF just runs you straight down. You hit your E, which is impossible to miss, and then you just beat him to death. So. That's uh, especially with the Leona. Wow. <laughs> I mean, Glacial Charm is going straight up with the keep it simple, stupid combo here. They're just MF ult with all the setup in the world. How could they possibly fail, right? I mean, that just kind of seems the, the way they want to play the game. Now, Peak Slayers is going for more of a skill based team with the Poppy, you know, having to react to either a Leona engage or a Sejuani engage with the W. Um,. Now, I don't know about Senna Ezreal. It just seems like such a lay down and die bot lane. I mean, I mean, they'll be able to poke decently. The Ezreal can stay out of range of Misfortune E and as well as Leona E. So, I mean, maybe it's just a safety type thing. Maybe they want to play safe bot and maybe they got carries going mid and top. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The the way that they played it last game, I mean, they it seemed like it, it worked out for them coming back to that game with just two meatballs top and top jungle and then carry, you know, two carries bot side with the Syndra, right? So, I mean, they could be looking to do something like that, but I feel like at this point, like, I would just so much rather be Glacial Charm. It just seems so much easier to play the game. And, uh, I mean, I don't know really what they're what they're planning on doing with these top lane bands. It seems like everybody's just kind of throwing them out there. Although I don't know if Glacial Charms top laner plays it, but like if Sejuani just gets moved into the top lane here, those are just two wasted bands by Peak Slayers. Yep. I agree. And I mean, you could say a similar thing about the Poppy, but I would, yeah, expect the Poppy to be jungle pretty much no matter what. Cause everyone forgets that Poppy's a top laner. That just happens to be able to clear <laughs> decently well, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a gnar in the top lane. I mean, if I'm Glacial Charm, I don't know. I mean, honestly, you could just run the Camille again. Camille is a really easy time just diving onto the gnar, and you have so much ability just to kill him topside. Um, honestly, if they just ran back the Camille again, that might be... Just Definitely the way might to be go. fine this game, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, sure, they still have the poppy, so, like, that's tough, but, like, at this point, there's nothing interrupting you as much as there was last game. It's such a free Camille game, as long as your top laner feels confident in running it back, I mean, that's that's what I'd be calling for. The the dive on... Ooh. Oh, okay. We're gonna make it spicy here. So, I mean... Huh, that is interesting. I mean, <laughs> the moving the Sejuani to top, I mean, you, I feel like you just lose out more in the laning phase, but I mean, the the gank potential is still there with the Nocturne, but I mean, I just feel like Camille would have been a turbo strong pick, and they're going to pick up the Syndra again. Now, I mean, Syndra and Victor as a mid laner, this is a tale as old as time, right? So, um, I mean, really, Syndra just should have all the pressure in the universe, but I mean, Syndra should also be able to get a free stun on LeBlanc every time. And, you know, we saw Elmo kind of pop off in the early game in laning phase. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not too sure how it's actually going to play out, but, uh, you know, I think Syndra should have an easy enough time if they're able to, able to play the, the lane well. 
Um, now, in terms of bot lane, you know, what are you guys thinking about Misfortune Leona overall versus Ezreal Senna now that everything's said and done? I, I feel like Glitch Charm's just going to run over the Ezreal and the Senna. I, they can't. There's no fighting back. Yeah, you just get you get bush control with Leona, and they're going to have such a hard time walking up. You're going to have to literally just throw things at the bush. You're going to have a hard time CSing. It's, yeah, it's just like they don't really kill the lane unless one of them just completely is out of position. Okay, so now another interesting thing about this bot lane, you know, I talked about Kraydog's, uh, about his choice of runes last game, um, going with the Guardian on Thresh, but now he's, uh, he's running the Glacial Augment on Leona. I mean, into the Senna it feels like it's probably good, but into the Ezreal it kind of seems like there's no point, so I don't know what you guys feel about it, if there's, if you would just run the Aftershock, or if you think the Glacial Augment has more worth, and maybe it's a late game thing. I mean, this is the Cray Dog special, it seems. Like, he goes <laughs> glacial yeah, on Always with glacial. Like, it's, it's definitely a preference. I personally wouldn't wouldn't go the glacial just because I do like the tankiness Aftershock gives you when you're trading into something. Like, if you were to stun someone up while, you know, they're hitting you, it's just like you negate so much damage there. So it's yeah, up to them, really. I mean, Timmy, I don't know how you feel about it, but I know that, like, you know, like you were saying earlier with MF just being able to run over them, right? Like, with the Leona, if, if you just have the Aftershock, you can go in, get a huge trade, Misfortune can do whatever she wants, and Leona's able to walk out without taking too much. But now, with the Glacial Augment, it kind of feels like a Feast or Famine type of, type of rune here, where it's like, if you go in and you don't get the biggest trade of all time, and... You know, you're you're going against two range champions that can just beat you to death on your way out if you're the Leona, so I mean what do you what do you think about it? Uh I don't really I don't really like the glacial in lane. I think it's more definitely like a kind of team fighting kind of rune on the Leona here. Um For sure. Because definitely she's just gonna press R on someone. They're gonna get slowed even if they don't die. Uh, everyone around who tries to help is gonna get slowed in the team fight. It's, the lane, it it could slow them. I just don't see it being super useful in lane. I don't know. Now let me ask you this. With that being said, and it being more of a late game thing, you know, against an Ezreal Senna, are you not just trying to run over the lane as hard as you can? Or do you feel like, okay, that's... Okay, we got a insta-flash cleanse. Well, Senna was just disrespecting a lot there. Just literally shoving into their face. Like, hey. This is a big Elmo trade, like and Syndra, Syndra brings the ignite. Oh, okay, wow. that's a solo kill on Elmo. Wow, that is not how you want to start this game. Obviously, you know I was gonna mention it actually <laughs> while we were talking about <laughs> while we were talking about the bot lane. I was gonna mention you know the Syndra having ignite is an interesting choice because if you don't get ahead, Victor just gets to take bad trades or take even trades with you, and then just back in TP, and all of a sudden he's winning lane. But now the fact that this, you know, Elmo's not really respecting the ignite damage. Hold on, we have a gank going on top. League survivor is gonna survive for now, but it seems like Victor is gonna, the enemy team. is gonna come up. You know, you do not want to. Oh, that's a yikes! Because now Victor just gets a free augment, and that kind of basically speeds up the amount of time that it's going to take for Victor to get back into this lane. The hard thing about Victor Syndra is, like we just kind of saw there, especially with the Ignite difference, like, something must have happened where, uh, you know, I think Elmo just got the better of the trade and it was literally an Ignite diff. But if there's no Ignite, Syndra should be winning the trade anyways. Uh, and basically as command of the lane at all times, just due to the, the nature of having a short Q cooldown, um, up until Victor gets his augment on his laser. Once he gets that, he's able to dictate the lane with the shove on the minion. So, um, getting that assist is actually really big for the Victor because it just speeds up the process so much and basically gets you to the point that you need to get to in this lane faster. Um, now it seems like Ezreal's actually getting a really big advantage here in bot lane. Um, yeah, it's just the range versus melee support. Uh, pretty rough for the first couple levels, first few levels. Um, 
Yeah. But honestly, I, I once Leon hits six, it's just game over for those two. Like I don't. Yeah, I well, mean, if they were to engage here, just like Craig just tried doing there, I mean, if they get the Senna, it's basically dead, dead Senna. They're basically playing with fire. They're shoving them under, under tower just to keep the poke game up, because together, keeping them under the tower is probably their best bet. That just opens them up to ganks, so it just... Maybe they just know that Nocturne won't be showing up early until he hits 6, so once he hits 6, that's when they're going to have problems with doing this. Yeah, and I mean, that was... I mean, that's one thing that's going good by this Poppy here, actually you know, taking the, the birds early on there and then just staying down bot side and making sure that their bot lane can get all this pressure for free without, you know, risk of getting 3v2 down there. Um, you know, one thing that I did think was interesting was the, you know, the Nocturne going for the gank top. If, you know, the way I kind of see it, if he just makes his way down bot and I wasn't paying attention to the pathing early, but like, he can really just bail out this Misfortune Leona lane and... Like we kind of talked about earlier, I really feel like this Misfortune Leona lane is a feast for fam and just run them down early game, like, especially with the, I mean, I don't know about the Glacial, like the, like I said, like the Aftershock, I feel like just gives you that pressure in lane to go in and it's not as bad of a trade on your way out. But like, if the Nocturne just comes down there and relieves them of that pressure, the bot lane can really do what they need to do because you do not want to be on the other end of, you know, getting shoved in by an Ezreal. Oh, and the, the ult goes wide by the Sejuani. Now let's see if he allows this to slow push and then maybe they play for something topside. He's about to go Mega. He is about to go Mega. Poppy is up here. Nocturne has no smite and Poppy does, so that's Ooh, gonna be a scuttle They don't wanna fight for, this anymore. That's a scuttle for Poppy, but I think they just wanna get out, yeah. And Nocturne is five here, he should be Honestly, probably camp away from level six here, so you might just go red and gank bot. Yeah, once um, you hit six, you should just be looking for bot constantly. Like, there's just so much setup. Yep. And like you said, it's just gonna bail the bot lane out, and it'll just allow them to just do what they want to do. Oh, now this is something interesting. What do you think about potentially this lethality misfortune coming in here? Because that's uh... for like three long swords. Especially, especially with the press, the attack. They're pretty squishy. I mean, I don't think it's. I mean, I don't think Lethal even got nerfed on MF, did it? It's just the crit got buffed. Yep. So I mean, it's really not awful, but the only reason okay. people went Lethality oh. was the E poke early that was on. Just get very a huge bleed from poking on E, and then you yeah. pop up with your ultimate in late game and, and just one shot the whole team. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the E did get nerfed on the patch that we're on here, so, I mean, that's kind of why the Arkham Comet's going away, and I think that's why Crit is coming in, but, I mean... Yeah, they wanted to make her more silly and see them as support. Right. Uh, another thing is, I mean, it really feels like Misfortune went for the complete lane-dominant runes. I mean, they went Inspiration again. They have the biscuits. Nocturne's six here, but he should just be. Oh no, that's not their ward. So he's Bottom not on vision. Six too. Could have yeah, I mean, this is something. scary. Cinderus not moving. They probably could have just collapsed on Elmo there. And I don't know if you want this if you're Glacial Charm. Uh, so. I think they should have just went on the on Ezreal. Yeah, they should have went that. Uh oh, and this might be a solo kill up top with the ignite. Said Joani, never mind. It's very close though, and Sejuani's got a huge. Huge CS advantage right now. I mean, he's really dominating this lane. I'm actually kind of surprised. I mean, oh, you cannot stay there, but okay, that's an R flash for free. Nocturne, what's your cooldown on your ult? Come top during that time. <laughs> that's what I'd be saying, non-stop. Come top. This guy's getting full. Come top. <laughs> okay, well, red team's gonna get a free first dragon here. I'm not so sure that I love the uh, Fiendish Codex on the Victor here. I just don't really get it. I mean, maybe he just he just didn't want to back and get two Amp Tomes? I don't 
I feel like you just have to get your lost chapter as fast as possible because unless there's I mean there's no way he has enough gold for it now cindra has got lost chapter now he's not running futures and if he were he'd need another 100 gold here to get it so he's I mean he's gonna yeah, be in a tough spot man a lot here um, the two amp tones yeah and if Syndra just doesn't get baited by uh, going Sork Shoes next, she can just get her Mythic so much earlier than Elmo's going to. She can be so much more useful. That's that's very interesting. I mean, it's you don't have to have mana problems if you just don't poke as much, but you're kind of just... You're completely under the influence of Syndra until you get your Augment, and then, I mean, if Syndra just tries to match it, which he does have his augment now, but like, if he just gets matched by the Syndra and shoving the wave, then he's gonna run out of mana way faster than the Syndra is just due to the lost chapter of regaining mana. That feels really bad if you're Victor. And he also bought a refillable now, which... I don't know. Interesting decisions here by Elmo. As much as I love the guy. <laughs> Not that I know Another interesting decision. Uh, MF could go for shield bow. I don't know why she would, but it's possible. Oh, oh, it's... yeah. Okay, and we're seeing a different side of the... Wow, both... I mean, it really seems like both ADCs have a different idea of what their ADC should be building, because uh, Ezreal's going for Trinity Force here, is he not? I mean, he's going Trinity Force, MF's going most likely the Immortal Shield, though. I don't... I don't really know about all these decisions here, <laughs> item-wise. Trinity Force is fine. Um, there's more survivability against the Nocturne if he goes. Okay. Well, it's ignited. That's a big Nocturne ult. If he gets in on him, he diz. Okay, that's huge. He diz. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Wow, and that actually turns around just due to having that Nocturne pressure. Honestly, they should just play to shove out the wave mid and rift it. Yeah, that might be what they do here. Just get more gold on the victor as much as he can. Yep, so they're just gonna go and probably take about three plates here. Okay, she goes in. The cleanse is wasted. The flash is also wasted because he stays in the MF ult for the longest okay. time. This is not turning around anytime soon. That's Glacial Charm double kill here. Yep, this is where this lane starts taking over. It's just... You cannot be pushed up that far to get be able to get hit by an E from the owner. Yeah, that is... I mean, it's just unfortunate now that it seems like the two times that the... Okay, bit of an ego fight in the jungle yet again. It just... It's a bit unfortunate that uh, it seems like both times that the Leona has gotten a good engage on and the misfortune auto attacks <laughs> or ults or anything to send immediately cla uh, cleanse flashes it's like I, I just I feel like you're just wasting double sums just to get run down anyways and hey uh, glacial augments really coming in there because Senna cannot run away <laughs> yep that is true what does MF buy I mean it's gotta be shield but right Okay, 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 okay. Whew. That's you know, good. I was, I was sweating for a, a little bit there. That's good. So the long sword was just you had We're going BT. We're going BT second? Is it happening? Oh. Probably not. But maybe. <laughs> Could be a collector angle. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean yeah, maybe uh maybe she looks at your ash history and saw the BT second every game. <laughs> What an exhilarating fight. And this is really a clash of hands right here. The, these mechanics are out of control in the top lane. Just well, damage on damage. Nar has started to catch up on CS, so... Yeah, he's really real coming back into this game. I'd be interested to know what changed, because it doesn't seem like Sejuani's been going anywhere, doing anything, making any plays, so... I don't know what really happened that just during this later later stages of the lane that Sejuani just kind of lost lost that lead. I don't know. But, I mean, meanwhile, it seems like Dragon's up, and, I mean, Glacial Charm has complete control of the river right now. You can see the wards all across the map there. I mean, they they know every step that the jungle's going to make if they walk down there. 
Um, Nocturne's just waiting for that send to step up. Right, like just waiting for. Just waiting. Waiting for them to overextend past their tower. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Cinder does have Mythic here, but. Poppy's I mean, just, really. I guess we're just. If they know they can't fight, but there's just nothing for her to get here. I mean, Poppy can take yeah. Poppy can take all the camps up here, and pretty safely do it too. I'm with the control ward watching her back. heading and... straight up though. Elmo's moving. I'm interested. Do they know that Poppy's there? I mean, maybe they just they, figured it out that there's nowhere know. else they can be. Yeah, they. I mean, they must have just. Oh, that's a Sentuani ult gone wide. He's not going to be able to get out on the blast cone. Wow, and that's Poppy dead. That's actually really surprising. I mean, I don't think there was any vision that the Poppy walked over. It really. I think Poppy like... knocked him out of his uh, of his ulti, maybe with the W. No, that's not a dash. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. No, how it's sorry, Chase. You're just wrong. It doesn't count. No. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> this is why we don't let you play. Either of those champions uh, support. <laughs> yeah, not Nocturne support. Probably pretty troll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Nocturne's uh, unstoppable. As well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, see, now it's it's just funny the way this bot lane's going now, where Ezreal and Senna can't even pretend like they're gonna stay there in Pokemon or Tower. They just are scared to death of Leona walking up at any time. Uh, yeah. Leona? They should does, definitely be walking up and canceling their backs. Does have the free stopwatch, and Elmo went for the Leandries. I mean, I guess maybe it makes sense with Ezreal buying Trinity and then two tank or two health stackers, but maybe Syndra also goes Shadow Flame, so maybe it has a little bit more value. But I don't know. I feel like uh, just really laying the poke on versus the. The center of the Ezreal or the Syndra is probably what I would have gone for and just gone for the, the Ludens, but I don't hate it at least. Senna's really acting like she can do anything. <laughs> Sprinting at that guy. Sprinting at that guy. There goes Mega, that's huge! Alright. Okay, Victor's down here, Nocturne's not up here, they're gonna get a free rift on top, but meanwhile a fight is happening. Uh-oh, that's a cleanse okay. flash again! That's the third cleanse flash we've seen from the Senna. Okay, a TP from the Sejuani, Nocturne's just follow the rift. Wow, oh, if that if that W hits, actually Elmo's dead and they can get out. Okay, that was a whole lot of stuff for a whole lot of nothing, that was crazy. You know, EMF is a bit confused, uh, she's playing like, he is lethality. Every single time there's a stun, that ult comes out instantly. Uh, it does not do that much damage. Just walk up and auto attack. Get your press the attack off. Auto Q auto. You're gonna do a lot more damage. Yeah, I mean, you're you're running the press the attack like you're, it's you're not, not really it. you're not really looking to spend the entire fight ulting. You know, you might as well get some of that damage off just through auto attacks and then go for the ult. Okay, well Nars gonna be mega here. I really don't see how a gank is possible. So Johnny doesn't have ult. This Ooh. Oh, wow okay the Nocturne W comes out clutch right there. Sejuani has a frozen heart too, so she's never gonna die ever again in this game. Sejuani just cannot die, it's impossible. Nara going black cleaver first really seems troll. Yeah, I, I mean, I have no idea what Nara builds. I rarely see that champion anymore. It's very tough to play around the the rage bar. Yeah, I think, I mean, realistically, Nara probably just goes Trinity Force. But, I just... Okay, well, Nara just, <laughs> and Nara just decided he was going to kill can't move. I was going to gonna kill himself. Ezreal trying to get poke damage off through 7,000 minions. Just didn't seem like oh. uh, that was going to... Wow, okay, Poppy. Poppy. Can Poppy find a play here? Oh, she's just going to get CC. Nope, okay, the ult's actually really big. They're going to be able to clean this up. Okay, never mind. That's a good flash from the knockdown. Oh. 
Okay. He's worth a shot. Oh, Ezreal. I'm gonna zoom. Victor has no mana. Wow. Okay, Ooh, that's a that's a clutch locket by Cray Dogs. That was very very good. It's like my level locket right there. <laughs> yes. Moonstone though. Moonstone. You oh. wouldn't have even had to lock it. I just realized <laughs> it's collector. It is collector. Timmy's favorite. Two games oh, in a row. Gosh. Wow. Guys, we're gonna be down to two casters here in a second because Timmy's about to really just tilt out of this, <laughs> out of this spectate. Like, just why would you not take BT? You could just hit them over and over. You don't. I mean, I. Okay. You know what? I lied. He doesn't walk up an auto, so she's gonna press R. So uh, I guess the lethality comes in for R. She understands that she's going for the lethality playstyle and just accidentally bought a Kraken Slayer first. So, fair enough. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, Infernal Dragon up here. Red Team's starting it. Oh, that's a huge pick. They can just go. Poppy W stops the Sindra from dying, but then the Sindra dies anyways. The Sindra dies anyways. Behind. Poppy dies anyways. No one's there. Nars doing everything he possibly can on his own, <laughs> but it's just nothing to do. Nobody there. Everybody's already dead. Uh, uh, okay. Oh. Wow. That's a big, clean ace. Holy cow. And Glacial Charms over here saying, We are not getting reverse swept. We refuse. We're doing it for the content. We just wanted to hear EDE's voice for one last game. And now they're just putting on a stomp. I mean, the only thing that I can say is Peak Slayers did come back last game. But, I mean, that's just tough if you're getting clean aced here. Man. Do you, uh, so how does Peak Slayers come back like they did last game? Is it possible? Uh, I don't think so. You know, I think, honestly... I really don't think so. Got an Elmo just popping off in the trash talk, but not in trash talk, in all chat! <laughs> Saying <laughs> that the Cinder isn't at a gold 3 level. Wow. Elmo is who I aspire to be. <laughs> Maybe he can be our sub mid laner behind Lost of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And he buys the Medjas too. He's really just feeling himself right now on this victor. After the death early, he just said, Do do do. Do do do. <laughs> he said, Alright, the LeBlanc <laughs> didn't work out. I'm just gonna play something simple. He said, Something he broken. Said, yeah, he said, You know what? I saw Dogman win two games with Victor. So can I. <laughs> exactly. If he can do it, I can do it. That's right. And then, you know what? Okay. Nice. Senna, you didn't cleanse! Oh, man. <laughs> okay, the MF ult. I mean, honestly, the this fact doesn't that doesn't even matter at this point. The fact that this game is such a stomp with MF ult doing approximately 100 damage oh, this entire game is pretty incredible. Okay, wait, Elbow's kind of overstent here. If they can just do something, Sindra stuff is huge. That's wow, a big that's shutdown. Big. Onto the Ezreal, I mean, it might just be an Ezreal V9 angle. The only problem is Narn Poppy are running it and, uh, This you is know, how they come back. They, uh, well, Elmo, Elmo's ego, you know, gets the better of them. <laughs> and the Medjai stacks are down the drain, yikes, that sucks. Uh, you know, one thing I will say to, to kind of answer you, wondering how they come back, I mean, the hard thing is, this game, Glacial Charm has a Nocturne, so it really just stops the the picks you know you can't yeah. it's, it's much harder to get a pick on somebody when nocturne turns out the lights and flies in like a psychopath so all of a sudden it's not a it's not a catch because there's two people there and you know if anyone else on the team is anywhere nearby it just gives you enough time to to go in there and disrupt the play so i feel like that's what's kind of been happening a lot of times where the nocturnals have just been really big and poppy deciding to cue the ward just for just for funsies i guess <laughs> Out of frustration. <laughs> I can't believe it! Alright, Nar. Now going for a Divine Sunderer post 
0-4 Black Cleaver play. I mean, Gnar is definitely killable here. Seems like he does have some vision here. He knows that Victor and Sejuani are here, and now he... Oh, well, I guess he just kind of is assuming. Because they actually don't have any vision. That's all Glacial Charm's vision. So Glacial Charm really... Oh, the entire world okay. and Senna... Over, overextended yet again. I'm waiting for the MF ult here. <laughs> Okay, I mean, yeah, they just... We're just, hey, we're just walking into our jungle, thinking it's they, ours, you know? They just have the go button, and they are not playing around it. Peak Slayers is just not playing around this automatic go button that's on a 60 second or less cooldown at this point. Like, they just... They're just getting picked on picked on picked, and they're not finding their own picks because the enemy team has a... an offer. Okay, and that's actually... Oh, their field doesn't do uh, anything. I mean, it was, it was a, I understood what they were going for, at least. Yeah, and now, I mean, wide. red time might just be dead here. This is, this is bad. There's no way Ezreal can get out, and these two are just caught. There's no way those yeah. two are going to die. 30 seconds on Dragon, I mean... They get these two kills, they go straight to Baron. Yeah, if you're the rest of Peak Slayers, I think you just abandon ship and you just look to try and get anything anywhere, like just play for that bot wave, play for that mid wave, and try and get vision for dragon while they go for Baron maybe? I mean, there's there's not much that you guys can do, but I mean, as Poppy Senna, like, you're you're not saving the play here. Those two just need to go anywhere else. And now I think they kind of realize it, like, this, this Baron's gone, and now they're kind of playing for mid wave, but it's like... At this point, by the time that you get over to the dragon, they're not even clear. They're not even playing for mid wave. They go dragon. If, if glacial just goes straight down mid. Well, I was about to say. Oh, they're going for the dragon. They want it all. Well, I was gonna say glacial charm. All they need to do is just walk straight to the dragon, and this play is over. Double I mean. Pee -pee. Yeah, this yeah. is it's over. Uh, they just go on this one every time. Sam is dead. Pop is dead. Is, uh, is I mean. Poppy doesn't die, but this is this is very sloppy. This is a lot. I mean, let's put it this way. I think the addition of the Nocturne has allowed somehow Glacial Charm to figure out how to do macro plays at all. Because last game it was non-existent, and this game it just seems like they hit R and they go, our macro is this way now, and then the Nocturne just kind of flies to wherever they need to go. <laughs> but yeah, I mean... Peak Slayer seems like they're playing at the same level as we did last game, and Glacial Charm just picked it up is the main difference. Glacial Charm just... They really did just want to hear our voices one last time. Oh. Now the, the only unfortunate thing is that, you know, for everybody at home here, the next time you're going to hear our voices is during the... Uh, victory speech that we give after winning Titan, because, I mean, I don't know, maybe we'll be streamed for semifinals and we get an interview of some sort, but I imagine interviews will be going around after we win finals, so, uh, you know, get as much out of us here as you can, because there might be a two-week break before you hear us again. Just get your fill right now. So, how... Does Peak Slayers come back from this? I you mean, don't. Impossible. I don't. Yeah. Not I don't anymore. Really think there is such way because Senna you never picked Senna. Dies. Yeah, it's, you know, there you go again. Senna. She's got flash this time, so she lives this time. They can't first down the. Can't first down the Nocturne. Yeah. yeah. Oh, with as much as much as I, Glacial's oh. over committing on these fights. They, I feel like they could just push mid, and he players can't do anything. I don't know why we're not pushing two waves. Yeah, Baron. Ooh. Dang, Nar really tried to get the play there. Okay. Die. Wait, like, this is. Never mind. It's not big. Okay. It looked like it was big, but it's just not. I have full well, said you want. We're still fighting, anybody. you know. For fun. They're not killing anybody. Yeah, they're just tickling. Said you want really. They're just like. As mid power yeah. does not matter. You need to, you know? Wall. I will say, as much as I hate the Nocturne build, it did save him when he uh, sprinted it under this tower right here on that last ult. <laughs> it's the only reason he made it out, but... 
I do feel like, uh, just going not Bruiser Nocturne probably makes the most sense. <laughs> Now, are they going to wait the two minutes for Dragon, or are they just going to run it down and win the game? Because I feel like they can definitely just run it down and win the game. Uh, to be honest, I feel like that's a Senna decision at this point, because oh. the second Senna decides to yeah. walk anywhere past uh, her Nexus, I feel like Glacial Charm can just hit the go button, but as long as Senna stays all the way back there, they can just I wait the two minutes. I don't think she's safe there, you know? <laughs> Probably not. In Nexus? Uh oh, she's gonna shell on the wave. Uh oh. Is it happening? There's five oh manning mid here. Guys, can we push two waves? I'm getting tilted. No. no. But what Acting if we. For items? It's fine. We're backing for items. Alright, well, seems like they're just gonna concede and go for the, the dragon at a minute. A minute here. Gonna be going for the dragon. I'm probably gonna just switch right over to the Baron at that point. Just take them both, and that should be game. Mushroom's okay. looking at the poppy here. Whoa! Here we go. Here and the one from Brinkman. Wow. Actually, the okay. Two carries get hunted out, but I mean, it just doesn't matter here. Good one is in. Red team has no damage at all. The Gnar is absolutely useless, and the MFO probably did the most damage it's done all game right there on that play. And this game's <laughs> over, wow. Okay, that's huge, you know what? Glacial Charm, they stepped up, man. They go to game five, and they said, we are not getting reverse swept here, we just refuse. I think, uh... uh not the cleanest game? Not the cleanest uh, game. But I do you know, think they the played... Done. They definitely played the map a lot better than the last game because, like I said, it really seemed like Peak Slayer stayed at the same level as they did in Game 4 and Glacial Charm just stepped up to a competent level, so... Fort Ed. jumping on the desk here. Uh, if you joined us late, this was EDE, fresh off their 3-0 win, jumping on the caster desk to help out. We had some technical issues earlier with casters. Huge thanks to you guys for joining us. Um, you guys have any like last remarks on this match? Uh, yeah, I mean, from at least from watching the last two games, uh, you know, I all I know is that top side oh of the bracket might be a lot closer oh than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was more than a lock that we were playing Glacial in finals, but as it turns out... You know, there might be another Dark Horse team over there that... <laughs> honestly, I'd rather play Glacial Charm, but I guess, you know, we'll, we'll have to oh. see... We'll have to see where the where the chips fall in, in semis and, you know, see see what ends up happening. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, crazy. Crazy that this, this, <laughs> this went five games. I mean, my god. Yeah, there's some yeah. talk earlier. Maybe this shouldn't have been the stream game. I think we made the right choice. <laughs> it ended up being really, really good. Uh, appreciate everyone for for sticking around, watching it. And it was late here on the East Coast, 12:30. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Again, thank you to Edu for jumping on and helping out. And uh, like you said, hopefully this isn't the last time you hear from you guys. Maybe next week we can get you on for uh, the stream match. We'll talk to Sims about that. See what we can do. I'm pretty uh, sure it's exactly. already confirmed. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I know you said you want to do the other bracket. I think you guys are the other bracket. So uh, yeah. It is yeah, confirmed. Yeah. Um, but for that, we're going to wrap it up here again. You can join us next Tuesday where we're going to have the semifinals for Gladiator League. And then Wednesday, semifinals for Conqueror League where it will be your boys EDE um, taking on. It's a three seed. I, I can't think of it off the top of my head here. But I, Titan Gaming Hyperion. Titan Gaming Hyperion, yes. Titan Gaming Hyperion. So join us again next week. We are out. Peace. Peace.